recognizes Ms. McLean. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, the, the past two years, HHS under the Biden administration, I think has fallen short in many areas. The GAO is, has concluded that HHS has failed to establish clear roles and responsibilities, provide clear and, consist, and cons, consistent communication, especially around COVID-19, um, as it pertains to transparency, accountability, really to ensure the public's trust have been, um, the, to ensure public trust and has really failed to understand key partners' capabilities and, and their limitations. Spe um, specifically, as the chair of the subcommittee um, in oversight on healthcare and, and financial services, I'd found that the FDA to be gravely flawed in responding to the baby formula crisis. We had a whole hearing on that. Um, and we can say that, you know, it, it, it's Abbott's issue um, and it's the FDA's issue, but last I checked, we have all of these government agencies and it's their job to oversee to make sure instances like this does, doesn't happen. So my question is, has the GAO identified other areas where the FDA has been deficient, right? We can't fix a problem in, until we can first admit we may have one. Yes, I mean, there are two areas on the high risk list that involve FDA, three, including the new one that we just added. But uh, one is oversight of medical products and safety, including pharmaceuticals, also range of drugs, as well as uh, medical devices. And we made a lot of recommendations there. The other is food safety. We've had food safety on the high risk list for a number of years, and FDA is one of the key players there as well. So, so I'm curious, um, because in my, in my hearing I asked a couple questions, but I, I'm curious to know if, if you know how many of those regulators are actually back to work and not teleworking? Uh, I'm, I'm offhand, I don't know. I don't know if my, any of my colleagues know. Apparently not. But we're, we're looking at the use of telework across federal government, so I'll check with that team. They're not here today, and see if we have an answer there we can... You know, I mean, I would you, think you know. as a regulator, it's kind of difficult to regulate a facility sitting on your couch. Um, but, yeah. you know, well, I, I, think, yeah. I think some jobs, as, mu as much as we'd like to stay at home, we actually have to begin to hold the government to the same standards that we hold private industry to. And that is outcomes and outcome-based. What, what changes have been made around food security and food safety? Uh, not enough in our, in our view. I mean, we've been calling for a government-wide food security safety plan for a number of years with clear performance measures and guidelines that hasn't been forthcoming. Well, what, what? So, so I just want to make sure I understand. Right. So we have a government agency that is their job to oversee food safety, right? They hold, well, right? They hold. Well, there's, there's, actually, there's 15 federal agencies My, and 30 different laws that require them to have food safety. You have USDA involved, you have CDC, sure. you have So other, 15 agencies. Right, My, my right. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you but, for that clarification. So yeah, we have 15 right. agencies upon agency, upon agency, right. to do a job we, from what I heard you say, we've given them recommendations or we've asked for some sort of accountability, some sort of measurements, and they just haven't had the no. opportunity to no. do it. No. I wonder no. what they're doing. Uh, well, they're Clearly not their job. Well, they're doing a lot of things. That they're paid to they, do. They, they're doing a lot of things, and I'll ask Mr. Gaffigan to respond on food safety. But the issue but, is... But hang on one second. Is, let yeah. me, let me re, and I don't mean right. to interrupt you, yeah. but... We've asked them for outcomes on the job that they were signed up and paid to do, and we have not received that from them? Well, there's no government-wide plan yet. We've asked Congress to require the government-wide plan to create, recreate an interagency working group to work together. We've even recommended in the past there be a single food safety program and that Congress you know, move in that direction. So. The agencies haven't done it, and Congress hasn't required them to do it. Mark, you want to add anything there? 
Yeah, it's been frustrating since 2007, all those options we've laid out, both for the executive branch and for Congress. And to come back to your uh, example of infant formula, in the response, they said, well, let's develop immediate national let's strategy. Let's hire more people well, to let's, do a study. Let's, let's develop an immediate national strategy. That's not the way to do a national strategy, right? An immediate national strategy. So they're planning to try to formalize that. But for each thing that comes up, these agencies, working with all the regulations, try to address them piecemeal. And we think a national strategy would be a much more effective way to do that. Yeah, like for example, on the infant food safety pro, pro infant formula, uh, if I might, I, I think Briefly. this is a very, very important point. Uh, on that area, that market for infant formula is a very fragile, concentrated yeah. market that's insulated from domestic and foreign production. And also, a big factor is the WIC program, and there's a single-payer approach on the WIC program. So even though you have FDA there, the actions taken by HHS and how we hire uh, companies to, to provide services through the states on the WIC program has a big impact on the formula, infant formula market. So you need a whole government approach to deal with these issues. I we'll talk appreciate more. the indulgence <laughs> of the chair. I'm sorry. The chair now.